a lesson on tonight, uh, what Christians are always to do. What Christians are always. to always, always. do. Uh, and I, I believe uh, when we look at the Bible and we understand that God gives us instructions on what we must do, what we must uh, pull off, what we must adjust oh, in my. order to be pleasing in His <laughs> sight, uh, we, we've got to know some things are seasonal, some people yeah. are seasonal, uh, some relationships are seasonal, but there are some things in our life that must be consistent in order to be pleasing in God's sight. Uh, so our main scripture on tonight is going to come from 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, uh, and that'll be for verse 58. I just want you to write that down. We'll come to that one in, in our conclusion. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, right. verse 58. That's where we're going to conclude. Uh, but just talking about what Christians are always to do. Let's talk about uh, the first thing. First, uh, actually, let, but before we even get to always, can I, can I start really with what a Christian is? Yeah. Can I tell you what a Christian is? So a Christian, uh, theologically speaking, is someone that uh, has received the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Amen. That's a, a characteristic of a Christian, but also someone who trusts him alone for the forgiveness of their sins. A Christian, not only that, it, a, a Christian has put no trust in his own efforts to please God. And a Christian has repented for his or her sins. I'm going to say that those again for those that are taking notes. A, a, a Christian is someone who has received the Lord Jesus as their Savior is someone who trusts God alone for the forgiveness of their sins, also has put no trust in his own efforts to please God, and then someone who has repented for his or her sins. Uh, and, and then we get to the point where we're talking about what always is. So obviously every Christian does not look the same physically, Every Christian uh, does not have the same physique. Some are tall, some are short, some are different ethnicities, some have different upbringings. Uh, but all of these, with all of these differences, naturally, I believe we should abide by the same rules and the instructions that are given in the scriptures that apply today. I'm going to say that very clearly, that apply today, because obviously we know that there are some scriptures, especially when you get talking about the Old Testament, where sacrifices have to be made, where uh, we know that Abraham was one that he took, he was told to go and take his son to sacrifice it, the one he had been waiting on. Now, listen, God is not calling for you to take your child to the mountain Amen. to sacrifice them anymore in a physical sacrifice, uh, but everything that applies to us today we must make sure and be able to rightly divide the word to know what God is telling us to do consistently. So as we read and consume and apply the word, uh, there should be some consistency and there, uh, there are some things that should always be done. So what does it mean to be to do something always? What does always mean? It's very simple. It means to do it at all times. Very simple. I didn't even need to have a slide there, but uh, just so you can see visually, always means to do something at all times times. Now let me tell you, always does not mean semi-annually. It does not mean every other month. It does not mean every other week. Once a week. Uh, but all times. Somebody say all times. All if you're writing notes, underline all times. All times. Uh, and, and so we see here, the scripture uh, tells us in Hebrews the 7th chapter verse 25. Not only is God telling us to do some things always as people of God or as Christians, can I tell you that there are some things that God is always doing? Y'all a little quiet on tonight. There, there are some things that God is always doing. Can I remind you, uh, uh, can I remind you that Christ is in heaven always praying for you? What does the Bible say? Hebrews 7 and 25 told us, therefore he is also able to save forever those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Can I tell you that he's making intercession for you? Intercession is prayer. Intercession is uh, uh, pleading your case to someone. And Jesus is doing that same thing for you, for me, every single day. I know I'm not the only one that has made some mistakes on this week, on this month, on this year, but I have a savior who's pleading my case, constantly praying for me and interceding for me He's always doing it. Yeah. 
And then not only is he always uh, praying, but uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, write that down, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It tells us not only is he always praying and interceding, but he's also always guarding. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 tells us no temptation has overtaken you except something that's common to mankind. You're not being tempted. You're not the first one being tempted by what you're being tempted with. Uh, it, it, uh, no temptation has overtaken you except something that's common to man. And God is faithful, so he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Amen. He's guarding even the temptation that's even around you. Now, you know, sometimes we put ourselves in a circumstance. We, I, I know I can't be the only one that's, yeah. I, I got in the car and I drove to the house. I, 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 I got, I did the process. I, I put myself in that bad situation. But it is, the Bible says that God is faithful, so he will not allow us he will protect us. He will guard us to not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able. But even in his guarding, with that temptation, he will provide the way of escape. Were you ever almost a, uh, almost about to open up your mouth? Were you ever almost about to ball up that fist? Were you ever almost able to give them all or a piece of your mind? You better tell it. But God has a way of guarding you us. Guarding to make sure that we are not tempted above what we are able. And this is what he says. He says he gives a way of escape. Yes, sir. He does. He gives a way of escape. You're about to give them a piece of your mind with the phone run. Yeah. You were about you were about to go and do this, but uh, somebody called your name and redirected you. That was your way of escape. Amen. So not only is he always praying for us, not only is he always guarding us, uh, uh, but Proverbs 15 and 3. Write that down, Proverbs 15 and 3. It tells us not only is he always praying, not only is he always guarding, but can I tell you, he's always watching. Yeah. He's always watching us. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. Now, I know we love when he watches the good. I know uh, uh, when, when it seems like we're getting an extra star on our crown. That, that, that's what excites us. But can I tell you, he's watching even in the evil times. Yes, yes. He's watching in the evil and the good. So God gives us these, uh, these examples. He tells us he's always doing some things. He's always protecting. He's always healing. He's always delivering. He's all, he has this capability to always do something. And somebody may say, listen, I, that, that's not nothing I always do. I shop a lot, but I don't always shop. I eat a lot, but I don't always eat. There's, there's some breaks or something in between. Uh, so let me ask you, what should we as Christians always do? Let's start right here. Christians must always pray. Amen. If there's anything that we're going to do consistently, it's got to be prayer. Amen. It's got to be prayer. Uh, and, and how do I know? The Bible told us, Jesus himself says in Luke, uh, Luke 18 and 1, he says, now he was telling them a parable to show that at times they ought to pray and not become discouraged. And listen, prayer is not just something uh, that we do during trying times, but it has to be something that we do at all times. Yeah. Uh, prayer in the most basic definition is just talking to God. It's very simple. If we simplify it, it's just you talking to God. Uh, prayer is not meditation. Prayer is not a passive reflection, but it's a direct address to God from your lips to God's ears, from your heart, from your spirit to God. And you're talking to him. And what I love about prayer is it's not a one way communication. Amen. Have you ever gotten on the phone with somebody and they are they doing all the talking and you can't never get a word in? Yeah. Can I tell you that that's some of our prayer lives oh where we're constantly doing the talking and we're never listening. So he says uh, men must and Christians must always pray uh, and not become discouraged because prayer is the primary way for a believer in Christ to communicate his emotions and his desires with God and fellowship with him. Can I tell you, your prayer life shouldn't just consist of you asking for things. 
Your prayer life should not just consist of you saying, I want this, 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 and this. Touch them, 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 and them. Heal him, 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 him. But there must be some times in your prayer life where you're just telling God thank you. Yeah. Where you're reverencing him. Where you're appreciating yeah. God. I, I, I know I got a laundry list of things I need you to do. But before I mention a thing, yeah. can I just tell you thank you? Thank you. Can I just tell you how much I appreciate you? Yeah. And that's how I can understand that Christians must always pray. Prayer can be audible, and prayer can be silent. Prayer can be private, and prayer can be public. It can be formal or informal, uh, but all prayer must be offered in faith. One thing that you cannot leave out when you pray, you can quietly, you can whisper, you can say it in your mind, you can say it in your heart, but don't do it without faith. Don't do it without faith. So not only should we always pray, uh, but even in Luke 21 and 36, it reaffirmed the same thing. It said, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Prayer many times for many people is only when things are going well. Yeah. Let me scratch that. Prayer for many times for many people is when things are not going well. Generally, when you when you see the most attendance in church, when you see uh, the most prayer life, an increased prayer life, when you see all of these things, is generally when something's going wrong. It's generally when problems or issues are going on in somebody's life, and they know they need to talk to God, but it, it, it it's a little awkward when you ain't talked to them in a while. You ever had that family member, that friend that you ain't talked to in years, and you all of a sudden you saw them, and it was a little... It was a little awkward. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? How your mom and them? They, they, oh, they not here no more. Okay. Because you hadn't, you hadn't talked to them in a while. You haven't communicated. So you're not caught up with everything that's going on. Yeah. And many times that can scar us or cause us to not want to talk to him at all. But prayer is something that we as Christians, as people of God, must always do. So not only must we always pray, but Christians must always praise. Always, always, must always pray. Uh, uh, Psalms 113 and 3 told us, Psalms 113 and 3, it says, from the rising of the sun. And then, uh, not just one praise throughout the day, but uh, to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Now watch this, the scripture did not say you're going to feel like praising him. Right. The scripture did not say that so much is going to go well in your life and no errors and no problems and no issues aren't going to come up. So you're going to always uh, easily praise him. No, no, no. It said from the rising of the sun and even to the going down of the same sun that just came up. God is still worthy to be praised. We don't just praise him because we feel like it. We, we, we can't just praise him because it's, it, it, everything's going well. We can't just praise him because the promotion came and, and, and everything's happy at home. No, our praise has to be dependent on who he is. Because if we focus on who he is, he never changes. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and I got some Bible readers in here. He's, he's the same God today, forever, and ever. Yesterday, today, and forever. So we must always praise him because of that exact reason. So now we see in Psalms 34. It told us in Psalms 34 and 1, uh, this writer says, I will bless the Lord. <laughs> no, no, no. Just when uh, the promotion comes. No, no, no. Just shout when the increase of finances come. No, he, he says, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. So that just tells me uh, that this has to be a decision that we make. It has to be a decision that we make because it's a choice if you're going to praise him or not. It, it, it's your choice if you're going to praise him because bad times are, are going to come. If you haven't already, in, uh, if you haven't already seen them, they're coming. If you already have come through some more and you just made it through the battle, 
another one is coming at, at some point in your life. But you have to make the decision that I will bless the Lord at all times. And continuously let his praises be in my mouth. I, I learned a long time ago that there are some times where you're going to have to praise and cry. I can't be the only one that had to clap and cry sometimes. That had to shout with my heart broken. That had to open up my mouth and sing a song unto the Lord, even though my heart was crushed. Give an answer. Now, what do you mean? Let me tell you. 1 Peter 3 and 15 tells us clearly. 1 Peter 3 and 15 tells us. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Can I tell you, we're living in the time now where people don't just take your word for an answer. Yeah, you, you, you can't just tell me uh, God is real and you love him and, and not explain nothing to me. You can't just tell me he's, you saved and sanctified and not describe to me what you've been saved from, what you've been sanctified from. We're living in the proving age. I need you to be able to describe to me. You can't just tell me uh, a scripture, tell me who wrote it, when they write it, what, what, what was the context in which they wrote it in. That, that's the time we're living in now. And we as Christians should know our word enough. We as Christians should know our word enough. Not just what the preacher said. Not just what your Bible app said. On the video you watched for the first five minutes of the day. Not just that. Not just that. But we must know the word enough for ourselves to be able to at least explain why you do what you do. If somebody comes to ask you, why do you go to church every week? You shouldn't just be able to say because the pastor asked me to. No, you, if somebody came and asked you, why are you so solid in your faith? You shouldn't just be able to just say, oh, well, God been good. No, describe to me. Give me the answer to the question that I'm asking. We must be able to articulate it. And watch this. Before he even said be able to give an answer, he says, sanctify the Lord. God in your hearts. What does sanctification mean? Sanctify means to be set apart. Yeah. Or to declare holy or consecrate. Again, sanctify means to be set apart. I'm setting this phone apart from the iPad. It's separate now. Yeah. Set apart as or declared holy when he says but sanctify the Lord God in your heart you must be able to make sure God has the right position in your heart come on that's good you know because sometimes we equate God at the same yeah. level with our wisdom yeah <laughs> that's why you say things like I gotta figure this out yeah because we, we, we feel like our wisdom, is, it, it matches the wisdom of God. So he says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and then be ready to give the answer. Can I tell you that not only is it your information, not only is it your words, not only is it your strength that we depend on, but we've got to depend on the Lord for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding. There are some things I can't explain to you. I just feel it. Yeah. yeah. But through God, he, he, he can quantify, he can explain, he can show, he can reveal some things that need to be revealed in our life. So we, as Christians, must be able to always give an answer. Because people are going to have questions. Is there a God? Why do you serve him? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why does he allow babies to die? Oh, listen, they, they got the questions. But we as Christians must always have an answer that comes with wisdom, with knowledge, with seeking God, pushing yourself aside, pushing your experiences to the side, your hurts, your traumas, your past, pushing that to the side. I said, what does the word of God say? I can't rely on my experience because my experience ain't everybody's experience. Everybody didn't grow up in the gray household. 
Everybody didn't have the relationships I had. Everybody didn't have uh, the jobs that I had or the experiences that I had. And the same thing with you. Yeah. Yeah. But we must be able to always give an answer, especially with the word of God. Amen. And then lastly, so not only we as Christians must we be able to pray, always pray, always praise, always be able to give an answer. I'm going to close with this one. Christians must always be abounding in the work hey. of the Lord. Yes, sir. Always working. <laughs> always working. <laughs> always working. Now, work, always working does not mean I'm always knocking on somebody's door. Uh -huh. Always working does not mean I'm always driving in the car. No, no, no. Always working. Sometimes I can be working on me. Yes, sir. Sometimes I can use the Bible as a looking glass, as a mirror to see God, let me see the imperfections. Let me see where I need development at. Let yeah. me see where I need to grow and where I'm weak. Let me see, I, okay, this week I only prayed one time and I forgot. I, I, I got to build a better habit. Yeah. Now I'm working towards it. Yeah. Always abounding in the work of the Lord because before you can go and tell anybody else about it, Thank you, you got to know it for yourself. Before you can go out and start evangelizing and telling somebody about the goodness of God and you can do it. But the questions are going to come. And you've got to always not only say things, but people look at what you do. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Watch this. And even when you're doing it, there's going to be times where you may get tired. There may be times when you feel like it's all for nothing. Has anybody ever been there? Yeah. Listen, I, I'm up praying and I don't see no progress. Amen. I done got up three days in a row at five o'clock yeah. seeking God and I don't see no progress yet. Three, three. I, I, I've been looking for him. I, I've been studying the word and it seems like the more I pull on God, the more I draw to God, the yeah. more, more bad things happen. Yeah. It's the trick of the enemy yes. to get you to stop it because he understands that if uh, do, do you know what a, 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 a steadfast version of you looks like? Do you know what an unmovable version of you look like? Because the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put lots of Bible readers. We, we have to understand that when we're disciplined, when we're focused, when we're, and not just on our job and our diets, but when we're talking about God, when we're focused, when that's when we can become steadfast and unmovable. Or the winds blow and I don't even move no more. The bad news comes and instead of me getting on the phone or crying, I turn my face to the wall. Yes, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And even when you get discouraged, he says, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. You, you come into church ain't in vain. You opening up your Bible is not in vain. You studying the word of God while everybody else is doing everything else, it ain't in vain. You pushing that plate away and, and fasting a little bit longer, it's not in vain. Those requests that you make, even though you do not see progress. Have you ever tried to lose 10 pounds? Or 20 or 30 or 40, whatever that number is for you. Have you ever tried to? And you said, I'm going to eat right. And for three days, you ate salad all day. <laughs> and you got on the scale, you didn't lose a thing. You almost gained half a pound. I know I can't be the only one. Because what happens is we, we get to the place where we get discouraged at that. I don't see no progress. <laughs> I don't see progress, so what I'm going to do when I don't see progress? I'm going back to the burgers. I'm going back to the fry. Uh, Brahms calling my name. It's, it's calling it. But you, you've got to know for yourself that your labor is not in vain. The sacrifices that you're making financially is not in vain. The sacrifice, you getting up when you get up to pray and everybody else in the house sleeping real good, yeah. it's not in vain. Yeah. You taking dedicated time to study your word, yeah. it's not in vain. You're getting stronger, you just don't see it yet. Yeah. 
Your body's changing, you just don't see it. Your mind is changing, you just don't see it yet. You just got to give it a little bit more time. And consistency. As Christians, we ought to be alert at all times. Be able to always endure hardness as a good soldier. Yes. Always. always to be able to be partakers of the afflictions of the gospel because there are going to be times where you're afflicted just for you being a Christian. Yes. And that may not be like the Bible days where people get laid hands on, but you'll be criticized. Yes. Won't get invited to the parties at the house or the family. <laughs> they looking at you funny when you walk yeah. in. You are to always make full proof of your ministry. And then you're always supposed to be a shining light in the midst of a crooked and a perverse world. You got to always let your light shine. Even when you feel like it's dim. When you realize that you are not the source of the light. <laughs> when you realize that you're not, you, you're not the source, you just connected to the source. So even when I feel dim, the source ain't dim. He got enough power to strengthen and heal and deliver whatever I'm going through. As Christians, what are we always supposed to do? Always supposed to pray. Always supposed to pray. What else? Oh, come on. I know somebody took some notes. Always be able to ready to give an answer. And always abounding in the work of the Lord. Whatever you do, make sure this is consistent in your life. Not semi-monthly, not weekly, not just every other day. Always abounding in the word of the Lord. We thank and praise God just for the word on tonight.